Hey, how's it going? It's been about a month and a half since the Cubone run, and you guys seem to really like it, and that makes me pretty happy. I'm sorry it took me so long to get to another one, but I had to get through some of these requests, so hopefully you understand. If any of you guys are new to the channel, or you want to refresh yourself on the rules for my solo run, they are down in the description like always. As far as egg moves go, the basic idea is that I'm taking an older run of a Pokemon that wasn't that good, and we're gonna see how much it can improve if you were to breed it, get an egg, and then and teach it new moves that it could learn in Pokemon Gold and Silver. You can do all of this legitimately if you really wanted to, but I'm a degenerate and I will be using an emulator. I'm also making a slight change for the second egg run here, and I'm just going to be doing away with obedience. It was interesting for the last run, but honestly the disobedience mechanic was a bit of a slog and I just wanted to see how overpowered the 1.5 times experience from being traded actually helped Cubone out. Real quick, let's take a look at Psyduck and see how much it can improve. Remember that Psyduck only has Scratch until level 28 and to this day it still has the worst Brock time in all of my videos. It's easily one of the worst starts in all of vanilla Pokemon Red and Blue. Now here's a general list of the moves from Generation 2 that's added to Psyduck's move pool. We can ignore the egg moves for a second, but the main TMs of interest here are Headbutt for some decent physical damage early and Waterfall. It's an 80 base power stab move and it's available since it's an HM in Generation 2 whereas in Generation 1 it's an exclusive move to Goldene and Seeking. As far as egg moves go, Psychic is the really big standout. I can't really say that I like the image of breeding a Psyduck with a Slowbro and defiling my favorite Pokemon, but it is what it is. Psybeam is a really solid choice for extra people and to be able to avoid Poke Centers and I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys a little mini spoiler here and say that Hypnosis is probably the most important move on this entire list. I did attempt a couple of playthroughs without it and it's just a very necessary move for this run to actually go well and not have to grind. Needless to say I'm really excited about this one and I hope you are pretty hot for it as well but before we begin I would like to say that I do solo runs often and if that is something that sounds interesting to you consider subscribing to the channel I can't state how much likes and comments help these small channels grow, and if you're someone who just never comments, never interacts, or just really don't ever think about that sort of thing, do me a solid this once, scroll down and type in duck egg so we can get this video maybe recommended to other people and the algorithm will shine upon us. It would be a dream to be able to grow this channel into something big, and you guys and the community in general have been great so far, but with that out of the way, sit back, relax, grab yourself a soda pop and let's dive into our second egg move run. Right from the start, like all my runs, I make sure our ducky boy has perfect DVs and for this run we are naming him Egg Duck to keep it thematic with the Cubone run. I went over the moves in the intro, but the main change I made in my runs was that Hypnosis is the glue that will hold this run together. We'll get into the where and the why of it later, but I'm sure you could probably take an educated guess as to why it helps out so much. As far as this first section goes, Psyduck is out for blood and I want to crush the game so I do the absolute bare minimum and head straight to Brock. Starting with Waterfall makes things go exactly how you would expect, and there's no need to dwell on this fight. Not to state the obvious, but the rock solid Pokemon trainers Pokemon are double weak to water and that makes things effortless. The main thing here is that I'm saving going towards Mount Moon at sub 10 minutes. Already, this run is already hours ahead of Psyduck's previous run, and maybe that's going to bode well for what's ahead. But let's quickly talk about some of the Psyduck problems. You can give strong moves to a Pokemon, but if it has weak stats, it's still not going to sweep through the game and you can see it on display even at this very early section of the game because basically only having 50s in all of our stats means that even these weak opponents are going to take multiple moves to take out. This does make things slower but the problem is that even the second youngster can take us out if we aren't being careful like it does right here. It's a little bit of a slog but thankfully with a great move pool for our egg duck you can eventually make your way to Cerulean without really any problems. This leads us to the first rival fight and in this first attempt you're going to get the gist 
most of the run. Even at this early point, this is where Hypnosis already starts to become a bit of a crutch. You can see just how little damage I do to the Pidgeotto since we are out leveled, but I make the mistake here of not healing and I have very limited PP. I run out of pretty much all my attacking moves on the Abra and I just have to hard reset. Now I do stubbornly try to get past this one in my current state far too many times than I'm willing to admit, but I eventually do go heal when I come back. Now things are much smoother after that. The main point is that you are a very squishy Pokemon and you die really fast on the Pidgeotto on top of not really doing anything to it. You just don't have any damage. Once you get past it, it's really not too bad and I beat it on the first try after healing up my PP. The Bulbasaur could have taken me out, but it just goes for a growl and notice that it does take two psychics to take it out if you kind of want to gauge Psyduck's raw power during this part of the game. It's not very strong. After the route to Bills, it's time for Misty. This is the reason that I originally wanted Headbutt on top of it just giving us more PP to play around with through this part of the game. You could argue that Headbutt could have been the move to use over Psybeam, but honestly guys, there's just so many poison types and maybe the odd rock types here and there that resist Headbutt and the 20 PP of Psybeam just feels like it's much more useful overall. Anyway, let's talk about Misty and Staryu doesn't resist Psychic since it's not a Psychic type just yet, but let's be real, we all know what the real problem of the fight's gonna be. Starmie is annoying, it usually is in my runs, but it will only go for tackle so that's a huge positive and this is yet another early fight where Hypnosis comes in clutch. Although our damage is resisted, some good old fashioned Gen 1 sleep and just chipping away at it slowly makes me take the fight on the first attempt and that's pretty solid. Now we can continue breezing through the run down to the SSN and Body Slam is a very good choice for the upcoming fight. I also get the rare candy guarded by the gentleman with the fire tops because it's just really easy. It's almost like taking candy from a baby if you will. And now it's time for rival number three and not much has really changed here except that I've pretty much caught up in levels and now I hit much harder. The strategy here is exactly the same but I do have Body Slam for Kadabra and that makes it much less of a pain and I have decent answers for the rest of the Pokemon. Now we can look forward to what was a run killer during my trial runs. Lieutenant Surge and his Raichu was the sole reason that I reset all my runs and I took Hypnosis because without it I'm pretty sure that you would just have to level up for who knows how long or just get really lucky to make it through this fight. It was very inconsistent. I don't really need to go into the details about what makes this fight a pain but let's talk about some of the details of the fight in general. Voltorb is whatever. Sonic Boom is annoying, it does a lot of damage, but we can just move on from that. And on the Pikachu, the critical thing is that Waterfall is actually arranged to one-shot it. I figured that out in some of my other runs. If you don't one-hit it and it gets off a like Thunder Wave, you may as well just reset. Thundershock is pretty bad too, you take a lot of damage, but you really want that one-shot here. You might be surprised that I actually get by this one on the second attempt. The key, like you guys better get used to, is Hypnosis. If you cannot get one-shot by the Raichu and then you get it to stay asleep for a few turns, Turns just like I do here, you can easily get past this one. And I just can't stress enough how borderline impossible this fight was when you're running headbutt over hypnosis. Like I just said, I actually quit a couple of playthroughs because this fight made it really obvious that I'm going to have to rely on sleep if I wanted to do it close to minimum battles. Honestly, this whole beginning segment of the game was a bit of a slog for Psyduck, but don't let it fool you. I'm kind of talking it down a little bit, but I am making very good time and I'm on pace to have a really great run. These are just some of the small hiccups and some of the worst parts of Psyduck's overall run. Now things are going to get into a bit of a lull in the mid game. We aren't as under leveled and as we make our way to Celadon, don't expect too much excitement. The main thing to notice and what I've pretty much been doing for my previous few runs is that I'm skipping the Celadon mark for now until I have more money for vitamins because Psyduck needs all those steroids that it can get for the late game. The rocket hideout is up first and to be honest, it's skippable. Psyduck's moveset is enough just to one shot everything and although I do get a little bit low there's no reason to dive into it and let's just go to Pokemon Tower. I want you guys to remember parts like this when we get to the end of the run because Psyduck actually loses to rival number four specifically the Gyarados gives me problems. This is a great example of what happens when you just don't get the hypnosis luck and you can't get sleep to stick and keep in mind that Psyduck is a little bit weak and it will never do significant damage to Gyarados at any point in the run. It's not quite alpha levels of menacing as it is in other runs but it's still very annoying. I do end up getting past this on the second attempt with some brute force but it's fights like these that make the overall run so perplexing. It's a really great run but there's some very questionable moments like this. From there I head down to Fuchsia to pick up the last HMs of the run and I scoop up some more money. Surf here is a nice upgrade from Waterfall as well and then from there 
I decide to go straight to Koga. I have Psychic, so how bad could it really be? It starts off very well, but just look at this critical hit sludge that takes me from 100% health down to nothing. First of all, that's a really hard hit where you really wouldn't expect it, and second, that's just more evidence that Psyduck just really doesn't have the stats to comfortably be underleveled for fights like this. So what ends up happening, and this is once again is a reoccurring theme guys, is that Hypnosis is the world's greatest equalizer. If I can just get the Muck and eventually the Weezing to take a little nap, I can just hit them with some Psychics and I can take the fight, even though it still takes several Psychics to get through them. And you might think that these are some red flags, and I really can't argue with that, but through God, all things are possible, so let's just continue on. After that, it's time to finally visit the Celadon Pokemart, and with all that money we've accrued, I can actually afford about 7 Vitamins, and I think Calciums for the Special will help us the most in the later situations. Because more damage just always smooths out the run, and like they say, offense is the best defense. Isn't that what they say? Sports ball, guys. Since I'm here, I put off Erica long enough, and it's time to see what that victory bell is all about. At level 37, I can actually outspeed it, but Psychic just doesn't do enough damage. I get put to sleep, and I actually tank a Razor Leaf before waking up, and then I take it out. Here I make a minor mistake once again. I've been going way too long, and my PP has finally ran out on any of my relevant moves. It's not a big deal, though. I still have the Ether from earlier. So I reset, I use Ether on Psychic, and then I go back into the fight. And obviously when I go back in, I'm going to have some really bad luck on Bob Plume. It alone takes me out two straight times, and both times I'm pretty much near or at full health. This is just the essence of Hypnosis. At the end of the day, it's essentially a coin flip, and this is just an example of how easy you can lose a fight when you just don't get one to go your way. As things usually go, it's this attempt right here where I'm barely alive and I actually tanked a Razor Leaf earlier that I just pretty much straight up crit on a Psychic and that just insta fight on one turn and that's Erica over with. After that it's straight to Sylph and outside of getting the rare candy on the 10th floor it's straight down to rival business. And for this one I need to look at where this fight goes wrong first. On the initial attempt I take a sand attack and that alone just makes this fight too much to get through. I eventually fall to the Alakazam after taking a lot of chip damage along the way. The second attempt is another failure but I'd just like to highlight once again how awful the Gyarados matchup is. I want to use Hypnosis again. It ends up getting me low, but I want you guys just to really notice how little damage I do against it. I just don't have a good way to deal with it and it's going to be a problem and I ultimately get taken out later by the usual suspect Alakazam. On the third attempt, let's deep dive into it. The Pidgeot is pretty simple. You don't want to take any sand attacks in a perfect world. Here I don't and it can do some damage to you, but Hypnosis is once again the preferable method. You can slowly whittle it down once you get it to sleep and it's just really not that bad. Now it's time for Gary and like I just said, you don't have any good answers you only do very tiny amounts of neutral damage. Since Psyduck is a weaker Pokemon, it takes about 30 Psychics or Body Slams to get past this one, but it's really not too bad if you can just get that sleep to stick for enough turns. Growlithe is whatever, it's as insignificant as it will always be, and that leads us to Alakazam, and this is unsurprisingly the toughest Pokemon of the entire run. For whatever reason, Hypnosis just doesn't like to work on Alakazam, and we'll see that more in a bit, but here I do get lucky with some bad AI move choices, and eventually I'm I'm able to put it to sleep and this is the key reason Body Slam exists on the moveset to make this specific fight less painful. Last up is Venusaur and this is just Roulette. It'll take multiple Psychics but a Razor Leaf is a death sentence. I end up going for a Hypnosis because three turns is way too much to hope that it doesn't go for the Razor Leaf and things just kind of work out here and on the third attempt I do take the fight. And you can just see how things are going very well but certain fights kind of tease the underlying problems that Psyduck has. I wouldn't say that there's been any hugely problematic fights because I've always got hypnosis to rely on as a crutch and most battles will take a few times maximum to get past. I've also skipped over the Giovanni fight in the background as I've been talking. Like I mentioned for the first encounter, Psyduck has the moves to really trivialize this fight and it's nothing worth getting into. Afterwards I go to Sabrina and that's probably a bad call on my part since Blaine is the same level and I have a major type advantage there. You can see that Kadabra agrees with my assessment when it immediately nukes me down. The first attempt was really humiliating because I don't even make it to Alakazam and instead I get taken out by Venomoth so good for it I guess. The second fight looks even worse. I get even lower from the Kadabra but let this one be a lesson to you guys. Even if defeat looks imminent and things are looking about as bad as it can get, there's never any harm in just keeping your head down 
and continuing to do the work. Here I do need Hypnosis to put in some overtime since I'm only at 11 health but ultimately I do get to see the Alakazam and here all I can really say is that Psywave has to be the worst move in the entire game outside of moves like Splash that does nothing. I'm an 11 health Psyduck and it only takes me to 5 HP and that's just a special kind of pathetic. It gives me the opening to put it to sleep, and then I beat its ass, and I take a really improbable victory here, and then we can move along once again. With that out of the way, I get my nice, weekly, brisk, and serendipitous swim down to Cinnabar. I'm still on the minimum track here, trying to get through things as fast as I can, and that means it's time for everyone's favorite, and feel free to comment down below. Tombstoner, brother. And now we can get on with Blaine. It goes without saying that I have a great matchup here. Surf is the kryptonite to his overly cute Pokemon. I get a lucky crit on the Rapidash, and that takes care of that. And I do take heavy damage from a takedown from the Arcanine, but I survive, and I take it out after a couple of turns. This one is easy, and speaking of easy, let's move on to the final badge. Just like with Blaine, Psyduck is very well equipped to take this one down with minimal effort. This one actually turns out to probably be the easiest fight in the entire game, but that's not really too surprising. We can just move on. And now it's time for rival number 6, and I have to tell you guys that this is the hardest fight in the entire game by far. A lot of it is my own stubbornness, and then there's some other stuff. I try an inferior strategy for way too long, and then you have to take into account that that Psyduck just isn't that strong of a Pokemon. You see the footage of Pidgeot and it's not really that bad. By now you guys know the strategy. If you just get this thing to sleep, you can pound it down. And we really don't need to cover this part of the fight anymore. You've seen it once, you've seen it all the times. Rhyhorn and Growlithe are also both one shots with Surf and there's nothing interesting about that either. So let's just dive into what made this fight so awful. I'm sure many of you won't be surprised, but it's the Alakazam that makes this one so bad. It's faster than me and even if it wastes turns, this fight I just did not want to cooperate with hypnosis. I missed so many times and I get taken out a lot and here's where I make a big mistake. I decide that I'm going to learn Blizzard over Body Slam. The reasoning is that I thought if I made the Pidgeot and the Gyarados fight more consistent and I had that off chance to freeze the Alakazam it would just be easier. It's pretty solid logic on paper but in practice it wasn't worth it at all. The first thing that you need to look at is that I can't even one shot the Pidgeot. That's another pretty big red flag of Psyduck and some insight into how weak it really is. The second is that it does absolutely nothing for the Gyarados matchup. Seriously, the damage is just really pathetic and it doesn't help in any way at all. You still have to put it to sleep and since it has sleep status, you can't even freeze it anyway. My strategy for a while was to spam Psychic for the special drops, and once I get one of those, I'll go for Blizzards, but it really wasn't that bad, but it didn't change the fight much at all. Now I really just can't stress enough to you guys that this fight was really bad. The Alakazam takes me out regardless of if I'm healthy or if I've taken damage. Some attempts I do get it to go to sleep, but using special attacks against it is like slapping a noodle on it. I kept reteaching Blizzard for far longer than I'm willing to admit because for some reason I thought that this was going to be the strategy. I was pretty stubborn about it, but that wasn't even the most stubborn part, but we'll get to that in a minute. There is one time I actually make it to the Venusaur despite being low health and I'm just swiftly taken out for my reward for finally making it pass. I do eventually swap back to Body Slam and on my first attempt I'm actually able to make it back to the Venusaur but I'm just too low to compete. And although the attempts do get better and Body Slam makes Alakazam easier, it's still not great. I still die over and over and over. I make it to the Venusaur more, but I'm always taken out because Hypnosis just isn't reliable, but there aren't any alternatives for Sawduck. I probably spend about 45 minutes to an hour of real life time banging my head against this one. And let me go ahead and address an obvious solution that some of you might be thinking about. Yes, I could have just used my rare candies here. I'm not going to be using Mimic this run, and I don't have badge boosting moves, so I don't really need to save any. I'm just really stubborn, and with how weak Psyduck was, I thought getting this done now, and getting that little bit of extra experience at a lower level would help me overall. It's a little bit convoluted, but the fact that I use in-game time as a metric and not real life time means that I can actually afford to be this level of stubborn. You guys won't see the full struggle, but just know that this fight was the worst and I could have made it easier, but I just love doing things the hard way. Either way, eventually I do get through the fight eventually, I body slam down the Alakazam, and I get the required hypnotic luck for the Venusaur. It still takes 3 moves overall to take it out, and I have to tank a Vine Whip at the start because it's faster 
disaster. I barely survived and I'm finally able to get past this fight and hopefully it's smooth sailing from here on out. But first guys, wouldn't you know that after doing this fight so many times, my B button decides that it just doesn't want to work and Psyduck evolves. So that forces me to reset and do an already incredibly painful fight over again and that just kind of feeds back into the insanity that this fight was already inducing on my mind. Now that the badge portion of the game is over, we've seen where Psyduck falters a little bit. It doesn't do a ton of damage, it's a little bit frail, it doesn't have a badge boosting move, and even with the egg moves and the gen 2 moves as a whole, there's hardly any coverage for a couple of these elite 4 battles coming up. I'm going to use all my rare candies here at the start and without stalling too long, let's Let's go through the Elite Four and see if we pick back up where Rival Number Six left us off by struggling. And against Lorela, the answer is that it kind of does. And let's just go through the first attempt before we get into anything else. On the Dugong, it's just slow and painful. I want to avoid it using Res since I'm not going to be doing a lot of damage here. The idea is to use Hypnosis, and I'm sure that's a shocker to some of you. And as far as damage goes, I like to spam some Psychics until I get the special drop, and then spam Surf since it's doing a decent amount of chip damage at that point even though it's resisted. Growls would be very welcome here for the boost and the positive thing is that even in the worst case scenario, Dugong is just going to waste some of my PP and take a while. The Cloister probably doesn't even need a Hypnosis, but I do it anyway. It doesn't have a great special or HP stat so it's really not that bad. Next up is Slowbro and some of you guys might wonder why I'm not going to use Mimic this run. Sure it would make this fight and maybe Lance a little more consistent, but the short answer is that it's not really needed and I have really no room to replace anything on my current move. Set. The slow bro itself is a bit of a slog, but I do get a couple of growls to help me out with the badge boost. And I'm sorry to some of you newer viewers that don't know the terms that I say sometimes, and if you ever need clarification, feel free to ask me in the comments. I do my best to be new player friendly so anybody can start on any video, but sometimes I do just say things and you might not get it, but either way, let's move on. Jinx is next, and once again, I'm using Hypnosis just to be safe. Surf isn't resisted, and although it's a little bit more frail on physical attacks, Surf is going to be my best option. Option, and that's really about all there is to say about this matchup. Last up is Lapras, and at this point, I've been chipped, I've been dipped way too much, and a critical hit on a body slam just takes me out in one turn. And you guys can see where this fight could take quite a while, and from the first attempt, you see how it's going to go. And in the next attempt, we see Cloyster hit a critical hit spot cannon, and since multi-hit moves crit each turn of the first one does, that means it's not going to do just heavy damage, it's actually going to take me out with some honestly pretty absurd high damage. On the third attempt, we get a little surprise here. It's my favorite, Slowbro, and it actually does really heavy damage with these resisted water guns. It gets me down to below half health, and at that point, the Jinx comes in, I fail Hypnosis, and then it just thrashes all over me to take the fight. And finally, on the fourth attempt, we could just jump straight to Lapras. It's a very long slog, but we are really healthy this attempt. I get Hypnosis to land a couple of times, and I slowly chip away at it, and we take the fight. Admittedly, some of the resets were due to me not using Hypnosis, Hypnosis and kind of underestimating her Pokemon, but it's still not a great fight. But you get the gist of Lorelei, and although I don't beat her every single time on the future resets, there's really no reason to J Rose all you guys and spend half the video looking at her. We can move on. Up next is Bruno, and there's no jokes this week here, guys. Psyduck just kind of struggles here, and by struggle, I mean that I can't one shot the Machamp. It actually can take a hit, and all the other Pokemon go down in a single hit. It's a big struggle here today, guys. Hopefully, some of you thought that I actually was about to have a struggle and I'm just kind of preparing you because I have a Garchomp style run of the future and I've been having some Bruno troubles in uh, testing so I'm getting you guys ready for that but let's get out of here that's your weekly Bruno bashing we can move on on to Agatha and we all know the trials and tribulations that come along with this fight it can be annoying at its best and downright oppressive at its worst on the first attempt I take a bad time to decide to experiment to see how much damage Psychic does I guess I thought that side up would somehow how turn into Mewtwo and one hit him, but that's not the case. Afterwards, I decide to go for Hypnosis. Luckily, I do avoid any statuses, and here I make the familiar mistake of going for Surf, thinking that Agatha wouldn't use a potion, and I just extend the fight a little bit longer. She then makes a swap to Golbat, and since it takes the brunt of the move I just used, and I outspeed it, it just goes down no problem. This means she brings back in the Asleep Gengar that's missing a lot of health back in, and I just take it out quickly. We can move on once again. So far, this one is looking easy. You might be thinking. 
attention to yourself, but things are going to take a turn for the worse. Haunter doesn't put us to sleep, but it avoids all of our hypnosis attempts, it confuses us, and then it gets the most godlike luck by making us hurt ourselves over and over. Eventually I do get the sleep to stick and I take it out, but at this point I'm at a whopping 6 health and what am I going to do? From there I actually do take out the Arbok, and just to stay thematic, the final Gengar hits us with the Confuse Ray and I'm left to finish myself off, and that's just not a position anyone wants to be in. On the next attempt, the first Gengar starts off strong, it does heavy damage to me before I'm able to eventually wrestle control of the battle and I take it out. From there I'm still able to progress to the end of the fight. I think I should have had this one won, but I do miss a single hypnosis attempt. I survive a nightshade with a single point of health left, and Psyduck has a chance to be a hero. It goes for toxic, and there's just nothing you can really do when you're at 1 HP. The third attempt is nearly identical. The first Gengar damages me really badly, but I'm able to gain control, take it out, and then I'm just in an uphill battle from there. And the final Gengar ends the same as last time. Toxic ends this attempt with a very slow death. I will say looking back at the footage, I should have just went straight psychic and maybe I could have won. But you guys know what they say about hindsight, it makes a hind out of you or me or something like that. The fourth attempt is the worst attempt. I miss a bunch of moves and after swapping the Golbat and getting past that, the first Gengar essentially just solos me. It's just your standard worst case scenario Agatha battle here and there's not really much else to say. After that there's an attempt where I take some damage and the final Gengar once again puts toxic on me. I actually do learn my lesson here here though. I go straight psychics and if it wasn't for the confuse ray and a little bit of bad luck I think I could have done this one too but it's another reset. Attempt number six is awful as well. I just get taken down to 2 HP by the first Gengar and I'm not even going to show the rest of this attempt and this is honestly the last failure that I'm going to show. You guys know how this fight can go bad and I'll be up front with you and tell you that I failed this fight five more times before my first successful attempt. And what it really comes down to is a little bit of luck with hypnosis. To make it past this one, you need to make it through the first Gengar with a lot of help, and I do it perfectly on my first successful attempt. This means by the time I make it to the end, I have enough of a health buffer to survive whatever the second Gengar wants to do. I do put it to sleep for some safety measures, and then I nuke it down and we finally get our first victory. And this fight isn't great, and that's kind of weird because we have Psychic. I guess it's not stabbed, and we've seen that Psyduck is pretty weak, and it's slower, so that's kind of where your problems come in but now we can progress forward and see if things maybe get better and we've talked about Gyarados a few times in this video and how it's a hassle and everyone knows that Lance leads with this Gyarados infamous Lance Gyarados do you think there's gonna be any turn one hyper beam crits the answer is no for the first attempt I get the hypnosis to stick and from there it's just a gigantic slog to get this Gary to go down because he does get a hyper potion it's not that bad though we can't just move on from there the next two Dragonairs aren't that bad the first one is painless and the game cooperates with sleep, but the second one actually does get off a hyper beam after some agilities. It does some decent damage, but ultimately they aren't too big of an issue and we can move on. As for Aerodactyl, I have a super effective answer, but the problem is that it's really fast. It goes for a bot, and this bot not only critically hits me, but it flinches me, and that forces me to do another reset. That's kind of bad luck. On the next attempt, you guys didn't think that Lance was going to leave us hanging, did you? It's looking great. I'm slowly getting through the Gyarados and it wakes up at the end but it's kind of low so I'm thinking I can just knock it out without using hypnosis. It barely survives and the game goes full cheat mode and it lands a critical hit hyper beam and that's what we all love to see. And what's that you say? You like hyper beam ending my runs? Well me too. This time I do tank a hit from Aerodactyl. I take it out but then the Dragonite finishes me off with a hyper beam of its own. I do outspeed it so that's at least some positive information for later and eventually after a couple more failures I'm able to finally get through this fight. The strategy is the same as always guys. You want hypnosis to land and then you want to slowly chip away at these bulky dragons. That's Lance down and honestly the Elite Four has been extremely long and filled to the brim with resets outside of Bruno and since the sixth rival fight was so bad there's absolutely no reason to expect the difficulty to decrease so let's just kind of dive into these changes champion attempts. First up is Pidgeot, and we know the strategy by now. There's no reason to go into it. You put that bitch to sleep and you chip it down. We've seen this too many times in the run, and it's not too bad. Let's move on. And hey guys, next up is Alakazam, and it's a patented 100-0 to zero psychic critical hit to make me do this horribly inconsistent Elite Four run all over again. Fuck. The next attempt on Alakazam, it goes for a wasted recover. I miss Hypnosis. It does a pretty good chunk of damage with Side Beam, and then finally it goes to sleep, and from there, it's body slams time to shine. 
Rhydon has its turn next, and it's double weak to surf, so let's just keep this one rolling. Now we get to see our 30th Gyarados of the run, and the hypnosis part isn't that interesting. I just really want you guys to know how inept Psyduck feels at times. Look at my little teeny tiny baby damage as I slowly make my way through this fight. I do eventually get it down, it's just very slow, and that means it's time for the thickest of boys to make an appearance. Arcanine is weak to surf, and it gives me a little bit of badge boost goodness here just to help me out going forward before where I take it out with super effective damage. Venusaur is last, and I hit the sleep on the first turn. This means I got full reign with Psychics. It tanks a couple, it wakes up at the very end, but unfortunately for it, it's too little too late, and one last Psychic ends the run. And Psyduck has done it. Honestly, I'm surprised that the champion fight only took two shots, but I'm not complaining. If I wasn't so obsessed with getting the absolute best time possible, Psyduck would probably need about 10 or 15 more levels to make these end game fights more consistent, but that's that's not the point of these egg move runs. Now guys, I've repeatedly mentioned how Psyduck is weak, it's frail, and we've seen tons of resets. And I bet you guys just aren't expecting a very elite run, but why don't we just take a gander at the results of the run real quick. Well Psyduck finishes with a level of 63, but ladies and gentlemen, feast your eyes on this time. 3 hours and 5 minutes. This means that egg move Psyduck did what I thought was impossible, and it beats Ghastly's time. It was actually an incredible run. Even though it didn't seem like it because we had a lot of struggles and a lot of slowdowns in the run, but at the end of the day, even through all those resets, Psyduck was able to do every challenge in the entire game without any extra grinding. And what's kind of scary here is I made a couple of mistakes, and I'm pretty sure if I did this run one more time, I could have a sub three hour run, but I just don't want to do a fourth Psyduck run because it was kind of a slog. So this run really made me think about a couple of things. The first was that this one was an experimentation without using obedience and the boosted trade experience. I honestly thought that it would make these runs significantly slower without the extra experience, but it turns out that it doesn't really make that much of a difference if the Pokemon doesn't have to grind extra in the first place. The second is its place on the tier list. I know when I did the Cubone run, you guys were about 90% in favor of placing Cubone on the tier list at number two, and I agreed at the time, but after doing my second egg run and the two runs that I've done being number one and number three on the list, it's very clear clear that these runs are a different breed, they are much better than normal pre-evolved runs, and they should eventually be on their own tier list when I do some more of these runs. And for that reason, I'm going to be removing Cubone from the pre-evolved tier list moving forward. It'll eventually come back into its own tier list. I might move them on the full tier list at the end of the day, but they're not here for the pre-evolved tier list. It's just not fair to the other runs. Anyways, it's just kind of crazy to see Psyduck improve this much, and it's just kind of a testament to how having a fully set up moveset with coverage from the very start of the game can just propel even Pokemon with weak stats to the very top of the charts. I've explained my reasoning, so if you guys have any thoughts about the tier list, I'm interested in hearing them. I'm interested in all the comments. I'll probably get a couple more egg move runs under my belt, and then we'll eventually make a new egg move tier list. But I do have plans for the next egg run, and it's probably going to be the big egg himself, Execute. I think it honestly has the most potential to improve, because it has sleep power rather than hypnosis in the late game and since we had to use barrage and, and execute was just so bad in the early game I think we can see a big turnaround at this point I'm kind of just rambling but my final thoughts is that I love the egg runs and I had a blast doing this one I'm glad you guys enjoy them and I'm honestly not sure what I'm gonna be doing next week but I'm leaning towards Vulpix or Jinx and by the time this video comes out I'm probably already done it honestly Jinx looks god-awful but we'll see I'm gonna do some more research and mess around a little bit anyways that's about all I have for you guys I hope you all have a great rest of your week and I do believe that with this run or the next video I'll finally be caught up on those shorts and that's pretty great but I'll catch you guys in the next video bye